Cobra Kai. Kidding. Bonsai, I'm the Cobra Kai Kid, and today I am joined by Perry Nemroff. We're going to be talking all about Cobra Kai Season 5. How are you, Perry? I can't believe we've watched the show. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, we are recording this before it came out, like, officially. So, now, but when it when this comes out, the show has been out for everyone to see. So, um, yeah, we got to watch it, and... First off, thank you so much for um, coming on and for talking to me today. Um, always a pleasure to talk to you. My pleasure. I love your energy, and you know I can't get enough talking Cobra Kai, so this is an absolute treat for me. Definitely, definitely. I th when did we – was it Was it before – it was It was January, I think, we, we, we did our video. I think so. It's like my brain is all scrambled because it's not it's not a usual thing that we get two episode two uh seasons of television so mm. close together. So it's like on the one hand, I'm like, it's about time we saw season five, just because it's so highly anticipated. And I feel like we've been discussing trailers and images, but then it's like it was just earlier, like I had run my last Cobra Kai interviews this same calendar year. It's just yeah. weird. I know, yeah. I it, it's so funny because like fans, like it's like as soon as the season comes out, when's the next season? Like fans are so greedy for it, like in a good way. And here we are, two seasons in one year. Like compared to other shows, that's not a thing. It's not normal. I can't get over it. And the the one thing that really upsets me is that like I was greedy with that, but now I'm even greedier because we're gonna have to wait for season six. And you know, I know it's partly because John, Josh, and Hayden are are very in demand as they should be, and they're busy working on other projects. But like, I, I don't want to have to wait any longer than half a year for season six, and like that just means that I'm spoiled by this show. Yeah, definitely. They're working on um Obliterated right now, their new show. So season six, not even written yet. Uh, and it doesn't and it doesn't sound like there's an urgency too cuz even Thomas yeah. has the short hair, paid and cut her hair. I'm like I'm like Ugh. Yeah. I like I don't I don't like speculating without having any actual information, but I mean, I guess if I were to guess, <laughs> like I would agree with how you just put it and I would think, you know, we might have a little long to wait until we see another season of the show, but at least 1 through 5 exists on you on uh I was about to say YouTube on uh, <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, um on Netflix and, you know, knowing me and probably knowing you, we're going to re-binge over and over and over again. Yes. What do you what do you think YouTube's thinking right now? Like, dang it we had it <laughs> like what <laughs> i would think that i would think that they would be thinking that had they kept their originals division up and running like it was like it was before i feel like uh because nobody that was probably affiliated in like that regime at least is still there or still working towards that kind of thing that you know like maybe they don't care maybe they're just happy that it went on and got to thrive somewhere else but you know realistically even if YouTube originals had kept going, I feel like Cobra Kai never would have been as big as it was over there, even if, let's say, they got five seasons of the show. So I don't know. I think going over to Netflix is one of the best things that, that has ever happened to it. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. There was a major jump. And yeah, the show, like, I, I can't picture this show, especially watching season five. Can you picture this level of insanity on YouTube? Like it wouldn't have gotten the attention it deserved. It wouldn't have gotten the attention. I don't know what, you know, the budget and the resources looked like, but I've got to imagine that something as big as Netflix is prioritizing this really special show right now. And I don't know. I, I at least think I can see all the resources that they have on the screen. And production value is one of the most important things with a show like this. Definitely, definitely. Speaking of budget, like this is okay. This is like jumping right into it. Like I want to, okay. I want to talk to you, like, and ask you what you thought about the season as a whole. But, but first, I just want to mention this because I just thought of it. The CGI or the the de-aged Johnny Lawrence was like so good. What what do you think about that? I I thought it looked really solid. I feel yeah. like 
I can't ever get super enthusiastic about that kind of stuff because it always has that like uncanny valley feel to me. I always know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing something like that, and especially because VFX artists are like absolute wizards and I don't even know a fraction of the work that they have to put in to make even like the smallest frame of VFX work work on screen. So I am impressed. I can't imagine that stuff looking any better than it did. But I think that that technology, if I'm being completely honest, still has like leaps and bounds to make until, you know, we fully believe that it is the younger version of a character. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. There's, there's always that little, uh, it's not, but, but I thought it was like for a show that it, it, it's the, the budget for the show. Like they, they kind of like, I, I don't know the word, but they, they, they categorize the show as a thirty minute television comedy series. Like that's how they kind of categorize it, even though that's not really what it is. But the fact that like this show, which doesn't have the Stranger Things budget, mm -hmm. was able to do that, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I think it look I think it looks rock solid. It's just like my producing brain telling me like I know what you're doing here and distracting me a little bit. But the other big thing with something like that is I don't know, you don't ever want to take a swing like that unless it's something that's totally necessary. And I think by doing that in that particular sequence, it was extremely necessary. I think they needed young Johnny in that particular scene. So as long as you need to be doing that, I am all for it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that it was that, I think that scene worked um, very well with the, the um, de-aging. I think if it was like, a different scene where maybe he was standing up and walking around and saying different things. It would have been like, eh, but it was so simple. He had like two lines and it was just him sitting on a chair. It looked good. Exactly. That's how you do it. If you got to do something like this in a show like that and with, you know, the resources that you probably have, I think they made the most of what they did there. Yeah. Like that, that's just like, that just goes like talk about upping the scale. It's not just, you know, more characters and more stories it's like like little things like that like a dh johnny lawrence like that's upping the scale of like the possibilities of what they could do like i've always said i wanted to see like before this like i wanted to see a dh uh anybody i want to see a dh ralph macchio i want to see a daniel flashback with his father or something like i'm all i wouldn't that. mind seeing that and now that they've they've proven that they can do it i'm even more open to that idea it's also kind of cool to think about you know like the variety of throwbacks that we've gotten because like you have actual flashbacks to the movies themselves you have unused footage from the original films and now we get things like this de-aging technology being put to use like we really get a little bit of everything in terms of the format that they could be using to tap back into the films and i love it yeah definitely there's some things that you have to kind of like that you can like look at and be like oh that's not realistic but you just have to kind of look past like like one of the things for me um was when crease and terry silver which this flashback was insane when they were training under kim sung young the founder of the cobra kai style i thought that was so cool but then you see young crease like you know which is a completely different actor say like yeah i got this new kid in my class johnny but that's only a couple that's like two years like before like, yeah Martin cove and i'm like huh <laughs> did he really change his appearance that quickly you know what i mean i get it i get it i feel like that's that's where really strong storytelling and a show with a really good pace comes in handy and those are times where you know, I don't really mind necessarily pushing aside what I know to be true in the movie magic that I know is happening in order to sell me this story. Again, as long as you as long as you justify it and as long as the show overall is kind of like sweeping you up in the character arcs and the intensity of it all, that's that's really all you can do. And I think they very much tick all those boxes. And that's why stuff like that works and plays well enough definitely definitely yeah i i love that i actually freaked out at that part i was like oh my god like he's talking about johnny but i had to like look past that like huh okay you know it's like little things but um no i i love this season I, what what did you think about the season as a whole as a as a whole i'm really into it and i'm, I'm dreading the moment when you know people want to know well how are you gonna rank the seasons mm. 
it, it almost feels like an impossible endeavor to me. I could probably tell you like a couple of favorite scenes throughout the entire series thus far. But when it comes to each individual season, they each like capture such a different part of everyone's coming of age journey. It's like, for example, the thing that I love the most about season five is that I think more so than any season, this feels like the kids dealing with more mature things. And I, I think that you could see such significant growth in that respect. And, you know, over the course of the first four seasons, they earned the right to be able to do that. They did it and they did it really well this season. So, you know, thinking about season six, I just like, I can't wait to see what they do with like, like this maturity and being like fully formed leaders. There's just so many possibilities that lie ahead. Yeah. And that that's what I think John, Josh and Hayden do so well is they don't, you know, they don't keep something dragging for too long. So the Tory Sam rivalry, the Miguel Robbie rivalry, yes. like, you know, it ran its course. And this season, you know, it it was like if 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 the season ended with them still hating each other, it would have been like, okay, but they 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 go all in, which is one of the, the lessons in Cobra Kai. They go all in and they team them all up. What's gonna happen now? I don't know, but like, you know, they're going for it. <laughs> I, I'm happy that they closed the book on a lot of those things because I like I agree with you. If they kept it going on and on, maybe I would have gotten tired of it. I am curious to see what happens though next season. It's like because like another thing I absolutely love about this show in this season in particular, but in all other seasons as well, is that like whenever characters find a solution to something, it's not necessarily like using the solution and then walking off into the sunset and forgetting that problem. There's like very human complications. It's like the one that keeps coming to mind is the situation with Sam and Tori. I think it's at the end of episode eight when Tori confronts Sam and she tells her the truth. And that should be the key to Sam being like, oh no, I forgive you and like, let's be friends now, but it's not. Sam was really frustrated because of what happened before. So she snapped at Tori. So the larger point being, even though they're all kind of friends now and likely operating under the same dojo banner, I feel like there's still going to be little things, like little interpersonal things that they have to work on. And I'm curious to see what those wind up being. Definitely. It's just like the relationships. It's like there's always going to be like little things like even though Miguel and Sam get back together in season three, they're still going to break up and get back together. They're still like they don't even just get back together, though. They say, I love you. That is like really cementing things. Uh, yeah, it's like break up. I love you. There we go. Like, I, 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 I hope that they're together for good. Keep I leave, really leave them together. I do have a feel. I th I really think relationship wise, romance wise, I think that is probably going to be it for Sam and Miguel and also for Robbie and Tori. I think we have moved past the like, should we or shouldn't we be together and any kind of, you know, warring dojo riffs. And now it's more so about like them being together in a romantic relationship and having exchanged the I love you's in one case and then figuring out how they can grow and be better people while having that relationship intact. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll, 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 I think I feel like, you know, Tori and Robbie might have some complications just because they're a newer relationship. But like Miguel and Sam just stay together, leave it like that. It, you know, I felt like this season it was okay. You know, the the it wasn't like a breakup. For, it was just like I need some time apart. You know, to and figure things did. out. Like they did, like really the yeah. only reason that they could get back, to, the only reason they could get back together as a pair and also the only reason that the two of them were were able to move forward as individuals was because they had time apart. Miguel needed that personal time to go to Mexico and learn about his father. And then Sam also needed that time to rediscover the, the importance and the purpose that karate can hold. And then they needed to come back together so that they can move forward together. It was really, it's like, it's great writing that builds upon each other extremely well. Definitely. So what did you think about the Mexico plot line? I liked it. I feel like this this always happens to me every season because, you know, like you kind of got to do stuff like this. It's not that that stuff was was lighter, I guess, but I wind up 
by the midpoint of a season of Cobra Kai getting so focused on the build to the final fight that I feel like some of the earlier stuff has less importance until I revisit the whole show and I see how those earlier seeds impacted what we get in the tail end big finish of the season. So the first time around, I'm like, like, wow, Mexico happened really fast. And, you know, you got into some of like the fun, goofy stuff with with, uh, you know, the eating competition with the peppers and, and things like that. But, you know, really the the experience that Miguel has with his father completely impacts every single thing that happens to him, whether it's the reconciliation with Robbie, how he handles hearing the news that Johnny is going to have a baby with his mother. And then also with how he takes that information and what he's learned and he passes it on to Sam. So ultimately the first time around, I thought Mexico might have been a little too easy breezy compared to what I was picturing initially. But then when I went back and watched it again, I'm like, damn, like this stuff had a whole lot of weight to it. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Like when I because I did you watch um, all 10 episodes in a row or did you like space it out? <laughs> I I mean, not not in a row back to back, but I will say that I binged all 10 in two days and I just slept in between certain episodes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I I watched I watched it all straight. Not surprised. Not surprised. It's like I I I wouldn't like be able to I actually had like a dream one night that I it was like it was it was a dream like that I watched five episodes and then I went to sleep and I couldn't sleep. I was like, why aren't I watching? That was like the dream. It was like, so there was even if like, there was no way I was like, I had to watch all of it through, but yeah, like when you watch it all like that, you know, Mexico, it's like, I, I expected it to be like maybe three, four episodes. I thought it was going to be a big thing. Like, you know, Johnny didn't even, Miguel's dad doesn't even find out who he is. Like that's, that's the big thing. And to me, it's like, I like, I made a video on this, which I'm going to post, um, but like, it's my thoughts on the whole Mexico storyline. And it's like, you know, I think if Miguel's dad found out who he was, you know, then you add a whole nother element of drama, Johnny being there, like you could do so much with that. However, what they did, I thought was beautiful. And it has like a deeper meaning, you know? I think, I think it has a really strong meaning, but that was one thing that I did consider. If, if he did find out Like, what if he wanted to get involved and then by adding a whole nother storyline, it kind of comp, it overcomplicates the series. So Mm -hmm. to me, it sounds like a, it felt like a really nice way to kind of like close the book on that and not overcomplicate the story, but also make sure that we got something of value from it. So I feel like they got the best of both worlds in that respect, ultimately. Yeah. And I think ultimately what it taught him, what it taught Miguel was like, you know, just because his father Hector is right there. You know, he sees like he's got this perfect life, but then he discovers the truth about him, you know, that he's this bad dude. And it also shows him that, you know, even though he's not blood, he's got a father in Johnny. Like Johnny's always, Johnny drove to Mexico for him. Like, Oh my God. And then what he yells, those are the things that matter. They, yeah. You know, so, sometimes the 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 blood relationship isn't nearly as strong as the ones that aren't blood related who will go above and beyond to be there for you when when you need them. And I think that, you know, Miguel is discovering that and, you know, it's going to it's going to wind up strengthening this like new family. They're all forming tenfold in the future seasons. Yeah, and I love Miguel and Robbie's relationship. They're so they're that so... apartment complex fight is <laughs> above and beyond one of my favorite fight scenes of the entire so show. So good. Tell tell me what you loved about that. I love everything. I, I'm really I'm like very enthusiastic about that particular fight. So the first thing I have to say is, oh my, Tanner and Sholo are just exceptional because, like, I, I tend to do this when I go back and I rewatch, but. I enjoy movie magic. I like what goes into being able to bring things like this to screen. So I'll go back and I'll like, I'll look for the cuts. Like, where are you slipping in a stunt performer or something like that? There are so many things that can't be anyone but those two actors. And it just goes to show how far they've come as far as karate and athleticism goes since the start of the show. So just the choreography and the stunts was like truly mind blowing. 
And then on top of that, and this is something that I think is true of the entire series, but I think we see it on display big time in this particular fight. I love, love, love how they tie the fights into story. Like fights don't just happen because like, oh, it's time for more stunts because we haven't had a fight scene in a while. It is all tied to character evolution. And that one in particular, it goes back to the season two fight and it taps into how they're growing as individuals and making a big step forward. And then to top it all off, they make a big step forward between each other. And then Johnny spills the baby news at the end. And I feel like the only, like one of the main reasons why those two reacted so well to that news is because they had that moment together just then, and they were ready for him to say that in a sense, and they were ready to be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, that that was like, I, when, when he said that, I was like, oh God, how are they going to react? And they're both like, oh my God, that's great. It could be anything. I, like it really, it could be two polar opposite ends of the spectrum. We either could have gotten what we did get where they're happy for him, or I mean, could have like, ruined it. <laughs> they're kids, and I get it. I I would understand them freaking out and being mad about it, but because of what they just experienced, it totally justified a really nice, supportive reaction. Yeah, and I love what Miguel says. Um, he says, you know, I ain't training karate to uh, hurt people. I train to be a badass. Like I love, like oh my god, it's so good. It's like that's both Miguel and then Robbie says, yeah, me too. Like. Like, it's like, but the two of them, you know, that, like, you know, we have Crease and Silver, like, they, they, they train to strike first, strike hard, but Miguel and Robbie were never about that. They were never, mm -hmm. that was never their thing to hurt other people. So that, I love that line right there. You know what I'm really curious about? I'm kind of like jumping all over the place, but do it. Yeah. I, I'm really fascinated by the evolving relationship between um, Robbie and Kenny. Because mm. what you just said is almost the reverse for Kenny. Like, I, I love the idea that Robbie started with Miyagi Do, went to Cobra Kai, and that's kind of been, and then came back. Like, that's his path at this point. But he he's going to have to teach Kenny, who did the opposite. Like, Kenny got into karate to, like, like beat <laughs> people up because he was bullied. And, and dumb people in toilets. Gonna have to, He's going to have to have the reverse experience. So I'm really curious. And I, I love I love Kenny's last scene. This is I say this in my non-spoiler uh, review of Cobra Kai. And I'm so happy I could just like blurt this out now. I love the ending for Kenny in season five with uh, Robbie because it's not just like, like, OK, like, let's team up now. Like, let me learn from you again. He's like he says something like, I need a minute, not right now. And that is such an incredibly realistic reaction to be happening after what they just went through. Yeah, yeah, I I, I completely agree with you. Like that scene in particular, watching that, it's like, what a what a like a great choice. Because yeah, it could be it could be like they could have this whole heart to heart, but it's like not right now. And it makes you more curious, like, what is he thinking? What's Kenny's what, what is he thinking? What's gonna happen? It's like, oh, it's so good. Can I tell you one of my worries for season six? Yeah. So it's like with that particular thing, with where they leave things with um, Robbie and Kenny, all I want is to see the next moments. But because of the production, uh, I don't want to call it a delay because that makes it sound like it was set and then it was pushed back. But because we're not going to get season six for a little bit, I just have a feeling that there's going to be a significant time jump. But I want to see the after moment for the two of them mm. so badly. Yeah. Also, you know why there might be a time jump, Carmen. So you just think the baby's gonna be there? Oh no, 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 no! But like, what? What is it? Like eight, eight months, nine months? Nine months. Nine months. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So like, they. I don't. I don't know if the baby will come season six, but like, you know, it, they might. They might like. Um. I'm not like maybe like they'll like have her like almost like get have the baby by the end of the season maybe so like that way there'll have to be like a little time skip i don't know it depends what they what they do with that i don't know it's like it is an interesting thing to think about i i feel like if i were to make a prediction with like story elements that we know now and also knowing the fact that you know the guys are filming obliterated before they get back to this like i i do kind of feel like the next season could start with maybe her having the baby or having just had the baby really yeah, I'm like kind of thinking that because because also, I mean, I guess it would stretch out like in a sense, it would stretch out that particular storyline for, you know, like 
eight months. I don't know how long she's been pregnant for when when they actually uh, share the news with everybody. But I guess that would that would stretch out everyone having to wrap their head around her having a baby, whereas it would just move the story forward faster if she was on the cusp or having just had the baby. Yeah, I personally hope they they kind of hold it off, like because that's like a big moment, you know. I hope I hope they like save it up. I want I want what you're saying. I just yeah. just have a feeling it's not going to happen that way. Yeah, yeah. So, the, like speaking of like months and how many seasons, the big thing is you know season six hasn't even we know it's going to come. But it hasn't been officially confirmed, which is weird because season yeah. five was confirmed before season four. And my question to you is, because um, this is also one of the big things that I'm wondering. So we're we're get, unfortunately, like you know, we're getting close to the end of it all. You know, a couple more seasons, maybe. I this is what I personally think they should do. I don't know if they'll do it. I want to hear your thoughts. I don't want them to come out. I don't want to get season six and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, guys, season seven's the last season. Like, I want like a two season heads up. Like, like right now, I want them to say season six is coming, season seven will be the last. Yeah. What do I you think? think I, about that? I think I would prefer that. Just to go back to the timeline thing briefly, because I didn't think about another little wrinkle. Did they ever say when the Saikai Taikai is taking place? Because I assume Great that's going to be in the next season. So if it's like, like you guys were trying out in season six and, you know, the tournament's three months from now, then I guess there can't be that big of a time jump. <laughs> that's a good question. I actually don't remember them saying anything. Neither do I. But there's that. Oh, well, never mind. I take that back. It was a, it was a, old, I, I want, I want like someone to like translate the, the flyer. Even though that's, oh. but but that that was from the eighties, so yeah. I don't. But but I I still want to know what it says on there. If it's an annual tournament, though, maybe that could. Yeah, it, but like, what what time of year is it even? Is it yeah? Is it annual? Do we even know? Like, it's gotta be so. It's gotta be summer because none of them are going to school. It's gotta be summer. And because they also go to the water park, also that says yeah. summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you mean the tournament's gotta be summer? No, like I. If if the tournament flyer were translated and we figured out what time of year it happens and the, the tournament is annual the same time of year and we know that this season is taking place in summer, then like if someone tells us the tournament takes place every December, we'll know that we'll know the next season, maybe. Yeah, true, true, true. Mm. Okay. That back to your other question though. I, I'm with you. I feel like I I mean Again, this is me being greedy. I don't ever want this show to come to an end. And I think that I think that it's almost inherent in the story and the themes that they've been exploring, this idea of learning from the past and then passing those lessons on to a new generation. I feel like they have a formula to keep it going. Maybe they let, you know, Johnny and Daniel take a break and they do a spinoff series, but I feel like they kind of have justified that. But as far as like Cobra Kai proper goes... I mean, if I'm being realistic, like seven seasons of a show is a lot. Yeah. And I'd rather I'd rather have them wrap things up on their terms rather than continue, 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 and then someone pull the rug out from under them. And when it comes to finding out, I would much rather know two seasons in advance rather than get season six. And then they're like, well, we're new season for season seven, but that will be the last. Yeah, I would hate that. I would hate that. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to end when when the uh, the first generation of kids go to college. <laughs> Possible. Possible. Or maybe we'll see them go to college. I don't know. That'd be cool. Well, that could that could be a good spinoff. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Bert in like, college. Like, or like binary brothers go to college or something. <laughs> binary brothers go to Duke or something. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like uh, we need a third B. What's a, yeah. what's a, what's a B school? Binary brothers. Binary go to, brothers go to Boston Harvard. University. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. And you know what's so like? This is why this show is so good. It's like episode seven at the end. At the end of episode seven, you know, Crease reveals the world tournament, the Psychai Taikai. Episode eight, the whole thing is like you know entering the Psychai Taikai, and both dojos are in the Psychai Taikai. So now, now we know. Okay, season six, world tournament, 
Cobra Kai versus Miyagi Fang. But then we get to that finale and Silver goes to jail. Everybody leaves Cobra Kai. What now? Like there's still this big tournament, which like is most likely going to happen. But like, like now it's like, what the frick? (laughs) Okay. So part of what I'm thinking in that respect is like, They've been they've been so focused on training and learning about karate for the sake of this dojo battle, this dojo war. Now that Cobra Kai is out of the picture, they're still going to go to the tournament, but it's going to be more so training like for the reasons that Miguel and others have laid out, training for themselves, like training for themselves to be badasses, not necessarily to fight. And I'm kind of looking forward to or I, I have high hopes at least for for training to be focused on the individual rather than training to be focused on contributing to the dojo war. I think there's a lot of promise there, but I want to ask you one thing. So you think it's going to be Miyagi Fang? Oh no, I just I, I just called okay. him that. No, I I I think they're going to come up with a completely different name. I'm I'm like completely different name. Oh my god, wait. Can I tell you something that really frustrates me? Yes, please. Okay. Why are Daniel and Johnny's dojo why do they still have miyagi do and eagle fangies why can't they all wear the same gi like why can't they all just be combined why do you like because you're saying like we're both we're together but then they're like split like what the like- reason the reason why i would ever make an excuse for that in season in season five is because their future was so uncertain it was like johnny took off and went to mexico daniel like was kind of fighting, but he closed down Miyagi Do. I feel like we're gonna see some sort of joint gi in the next season. But I, I here's hope. here's another theory that I've come up with. So Terry Silver no longer can own Cobra Kai. Like he is going to jail, but they have that really state-of-the-art dojo up and running. They have other locations. Johnny and Daniel seem like they could be in a position to take it over. And if they take it over, like part of me thinks that this is impossible, but like, let's say they take it over and they keep the name Cobra Kai. On the one hand, I'm like, they would never do that. Cobra Kai stood for for things that they didn't agree with. But then on the other hand, I'm thinking that like, from their perspective, Cobra Kai has poisoned the valley. If they purify Cobra Kai from its core, then they can kind of fix the damage it's done. So mm. for all I know, maybe maybe Cobra Kai, the Netflix series overall is more about, you know, like restoring Cobra Kai to what Johnny thought it would have been to begin with. Wow. I don't know. That is, that is, a, no, no, that, 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 like, I'm like, I've, I've had so much that. time to think about all this. <laughs> so, slash, I've had no time to think about all of this, but I keep thinking about this and not doing my other work. Yeah, that's that's a good theory. I like that. Yeah, I I think that no matter what, there has to be Cobra Kai. The show is called Cobra Kai. You can't have a tournament without Cobra Kai, like because it's like it's the show is called Cobra Kai, and like Cobra Kai is like badass and like like you can't just like get rid of cobra kai i don't it sounds, know that's my it thought. sounds like a trivial thing like you don't want to stop your show from growing because it's grown out of its original title but also can you really do that like if you completely co- close cobra kai isn't it gonna feel funny to call it cobra kai and also what about all of our merch what about the merch we have so much merch I, I asked John, Josh, and Hayden that. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> channel. I asked them that during our uh, spoiler interview. That'll go up fairly soon. But at the end of it, I'm like, like, are we going to find out the new dojo name? Should I push pause on buying more merch right now? And, and did they answer that? They laughed. They laughed. They did not give me a <laughs> clear cut answer, but they laughed at me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like waiting for them to say the name. And they were like, we're Miyagi Do and Eagle Fang. I'm like, just keep one name. And I just, thought like, that they were gonna they were gonna name it before the end of the season, but I mean, yeah. I guess given what happened and given how surprising everything that happened at the end of the season was, not even just for us for viewers, but for the characters, like they didn't realize what they were getting themselves into when they went up to uh, Terry Silver's door. So, <laughs> given how like frenetic the ending was, I knew they weren't gonna say the name at the end. I love I love that. It's so funny, like you know how. <laughs> Mike Barnes shows and Johnny are like they're all drunk and it's like yeah let's just 
kick his butt. Let's just go over and like that's the finale. Is let's go over and just beat him up. I've had enough of it. Like there's not even like a there's not even like an inciting incident, like a specific incident that happened. They're just like Mike just comes like yeah, I've had enough of this guy. Let's go get him. And then Chosen and Johnny are like yeah, like Ch- Chosen. I love that like chosen just like anytime someone says like hey man like you want to like fight someone he's like oh yeah let's go yeah. like it doesn't he drops everything to beat whoever <laughs> he just wants to like fight everybody i love chosen that. wound up being one of my favorite characters of the whole season he was so good he's just he's just so he's so good in that role in terms of like balancing the the comedy of the show but without ever letting the the stakes of it lessen and i was very impressed by that and also chosen literally influences every single character that he interacts with like it's the same thing when we were talking about you know uh like mary and miguel uh, mary i'm now i'm mixing up real names yeah. and the uh, and uh, character names like with Sam and Miguel and all of them like none of them can take step forwards without having influenced each other it's the same thing with like Daniel in particular if Chosen didn't come to stay with him Daniel would have been in big trouble this season and never would have grown <laughs> I just like I think about it from like Amanda's perspective like just imagine you're Amanda and like your husband calls like this guy from Okinawa to like live with you and it's like what like this Okinawan assassin with size and like it's this like, is how they continue the show we get a Cobra Kai like sister series and it's the same events happening from Amanda's perspective oh I like that I like that I've I've always wanted to see Cobra Kai from like homeless Lynn's perspective because she like lives right outside the dojo no oh. homeless Lynn this season I was really disappointed but well we did we don't really go back to that area I know I was like hoping she would be outside the new dojo or something oh, I don't that actually know. would have been a nice touch maybe well maybe when they rebrand like I have a feeling like Terry Silver was very specific about you know how the the location was maintained and he probably would not have taken very kindly to anybody lurking around yeah oh my god I'm getting chills <laughs> Thomas Ian Griffith in so episode good. 10 no the whole season like it's like you i feel like ugh, it's so it's like it's hard for me to like pick like an mvp of the season because i feel like he's always mvp he's always the best he's just always he's just always like he's like but episode 10 in particular he stole it like the the hair the the, the messed up yeah. hair the the blood on his face the black and like Okay, so my favorite part from that episode is when when oh my god, when he like goes up so the you know the the fist, the six sensei is referred to as the fist. They like have Johnny like kneeled on the ground, they're like holding him like his hair and like silver comes up to him after like just freaking slicing chosen. And then silver's like, like, you got guts, Lawrence. You attack me on my turf come on like the way he says it he looks like he's gonna cry and he's like like he's like he's like he's like shocked that johnny would and he's like come on like how could you do that like how could you come onto my turf and do that and he's like angry and like disgusted it's thomas just wow he gets Unhinged. into it Unhinged, Unhinged Terry Silver is a very special thing a very special performance because really up until that point he is like polished, confident to the max. And, you know, like it's kind of funny that the guys just roll up to his house after drinking and it was a <laughs> knee jerk re- uh, decision, but they kind of had the intended effect. They, they rattled him. He had the fist there waiting and he was, he was like semi ready. But with how all of that played out, they rattled him to his core with the combination, of course, of the kids uh, going into the dojo to get the footage. But, he was thrown off and that is just Thomas Ian Griffith being able to like really do everything in one performance. That's always something that fascinates me with acting. It's like, and um, Peyton does this too. The idea, like, I think the idea of just playing, you know, like one emotion or one action is hard enough, but then you wind up in situations like a Terry Silver right now where he needs to try to uphold the image that he's sold for himself, but while also like losing it. And then with Peyton, she's got to be able to sell the fact that, 
you know, she's pretending to be a good Cobra Kai student. She's lying mm -hmm. to everybody about what she's doing with Kreese. And then on top of that, she needs to be able to convey her character's like own truth and feelings. I don't, my brain cannot process how actors can do so many things at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they get, they completely like, they're not acting. They're the character. Like Thomas is Terry. And like, mm -hmm. like even like, Okay, when you when you went back and you watched episode two, because remember, um, uh, Thomas or Thomas Terry, whatever, <laughs> whatever you 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 know, Terry <laughs> Terry revealed to UG or <laughs> to Chosen, he's like he's like 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 he found out who he was, and you know when you go back in episode two and you see when they toast. And I forgot the, the word, the toast yeah. that they do. But, like, you see Silver's reaction. It's just, like, the little things. He's so good. He knows. Thomas Ian Griffith was made for this role. Mm. He just is exceptional. And, you know, you know, one other thing that really caught me by surprise in that final episode? I don't know if you felt the same way. Was like how violent and bloody it was oh my god and like i, <laughs> I think you got I chopped love, off <laughs> i love horror i love i'm like mesmerized by makeup effects and things like that I, I love horror movies and i love gore makeup too but when they slice the finger off and also <laughs> it's like like how much blood with the swords i'm like wow mm. you guys are really going for it now but also and the the guy said this to me when i asked them about this in our interview you can't really introduce those swords unless you're willing to use them and show the damage that they could cause. So it's just another thing of like upping the material, making it more dangerous, but also having all the reasons to do that, having earned the right to do that. Yeah. Oh my God. That, that I think that is my favorite fight of the whole show. Now the chosen for silver fight, the really music, good. the, the, the did, atmosphere. Did you think he killed him? Oh yeah. 100%. Yeah, I was, like you slices usually, back off. <laughs> usually I feel like like me understanding how a show works, like it, it would have tipped me. It's because I kept thinking, there's no way they're gonna kill Chosen off. There's no way they're gonna kill Chosen well, off. I thought they but were every, every single moment that passed after that, like I'm also like Chosen's dead. Like Chosen's <laughs> dead. <laughs> well that, that that's how I felt about Crease. I, I know. I thought okay, the same wait, thing. Can we okay? Well, well, you, one of the reasons why I love talking to you is because you know the actors, you know, and we were talking a little bit about this, like, because we don't, we're not just talking about characters, we're talking about actors, and we both love Martin Cove. I named, I have my Cobra Kai bear here, I named him Martin, <laughs> Martin, after yes. Martin Cove, I love Martin Cove, so, <laughs> Martin, we, we, we know Martin is very passionate about about the character of crease like out of anybody on the show out of anybody he loves his character the most he is so invested in the show and with what happens and what did you <laughs> okay i was i'll tell i'll tell you this before okay. when they did that fake death in the beginning of the episode of episode 10 i was about to quit the show completely i was like you're kidding me screw this i'm done i had to go back and rewatch that three times because they expected me to move on from that i'm like no 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 no. listen was it like an okay arc yeah but he never mended his relationship with johnny which is the biggest thing for me like you can't just kill him off like that like so so i was ecstatic when i saw him jump out of that chair and <laughs> beat up those guys and he's walking out the frank sinatra but i want to know your thoughts because that was big for me <laughs> i was shocked as that was happening and i did it was like another thing where i'm like you're not gonna kill chris but i really thought he he died there and it made story sense for him to die it's like the like the stab happy element of it. I'm like, there's no way like Cobra Kai is doing this right now. That is way beyond. Mm -hmm. But I I feel like there's something poetic to the idea of John Kreese dying while trying to stop a fight. Yes, yes. Like that that made some sense. I, to I agree with you. I agree with you there. I feel like I, I like that. And that's why I felt like okay. But the biggest thing for me was the Johnny, like Johnny hated his guts. So he would just die in jail as like a, like a, everyone would forget about him. That was, that was for me. What, why it couldn't happen. 
Okay, wait, so, so here's a question for you then. What, what do you think Kreese is thinking and what do you think his intentions are when he's walking away? Is it is it something like, I want to go run and patch things up with Johnny and use this escape as an opportunity to do that? Or do you think he's, you know, going to be back to being sinister and manipulative and try to screw them over somehow? I think actions speak louder than words. And Crease has been saying a lot of words, you know, I, Johnny, I've always tried to do this for you. And Johnny's like, yeah, screw that, man. Like you, you try to kill me, all that. I think Crease, Johnny's not going to listen to Crease. It's just not happening. He hasn't been listening, listening to him for the past three seasons. So I think Crease needs to commit like an act of heroicness to prove to Johnny that he loves him. And that's how they'll mend the relationship. And I actually think that like i i don't know if they'll do it now that they already did the fake death but i thought crease was gonna die like not this season but i think like before the yeah. end of the season but i need i need him i need johnny to just know that crease cares about him even like just know that before crease and that's what crease because crease has nobody you know what i mean that's why crease wants johnny's love so bad because he has nobody that's why i think he's gonna go back to johnny and try and yeah so I'm torn. This. I'm torn on this. On the one hand, on the one hand, I think this might happen and this is what I want to happen for the sake of the character. I want them to reconcile. And then I think that the way that Crease is going to go out is he's going to die by putting his life online for Johnny and maybe even Daniel as well. Yeah. The other, but the other thing though is like hypothetically, let's just say we're getting two more seasons. Would there be any better big bad than having the ultimate villain of Cobra Kai be John Kreese? Like, if not Kreese, who? Oh, I don't think the silver is out of the game. I'll tell you why. Okay, let's hear it. I mean, well, let me ask you: Do you think? Do you think Silver, with with everything we know about him, is he so naive to think that he would have never got caught and sent to jail? Do you think like that ev that never crossed his mind? Because I think the thing about him is like, you know, he's got lawyers and I think he's got an insurance plan. Like if if everything were to go wrong, which is what's happening, I think he's got something up his sleeve. I feel like given all of his past behavior and the fact that he's got a ton of money and lawyers, I should very much believe the fact that he can get out of jail. I think that when it comes to him having a contingency plan, I think his overconfidence in himself might have clouded his judgment and made him not do that. But it's like, even if he manages to get out of jail via, you know, putting up money and having his lawyers do whatever they need to do, like he's not going to just be able to jump back into operating Cobra Kai. The one thing I have thought, though, I don't want to change anything because I love the epic ending of John Kreese walking out of prison and having escaped, but... Like now, now that Terry is in jail, it would have been interesting to have them cross paths. And it's like, it's kind of sad that like Crease broke out and is now <laughs> probably going to get in trouble when I'm assuming he would have been released when all of this information comes to light. Exactly. Exactly. Like that, 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 that to me is funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally it was like the same. I, actually, we don't know the timeline, but it's but probably in, the same night. <laughs> it's like the same night he like finds out like, actually, bro, like you weren't <laughs> guilty. And it's like, oh, shoot. But you did escape jail. So we're going to have to send you back. <laughs> like, um, that's kind of what I'm imagining. And it's that, always that's that's the other thing, though, in terms of crease crease being a villain. Like, let's say he does go down a more villainous path again now that he's out. Like, I mean, now that he's out, he's still running. Like, he's he's on the run. He's a fugitive. <laughs> so what can he do to, like, be a villain? He can't go and own Cobra Kai again. So what tools does he have to do, you know, something malicious? Well, it's, it, it's just funny because, you know, Kreese's whole thing is he wants to get back at Silver. So he probably is getting out of jail like, where's Terry Silver? It's like, bro, he's in jail. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't think Kreese can be the big bad again i I, th I think that's done i think they're going to towards a redemption like i mean i i even just even just the scene with him and dan him daniel and johnny in the in the prison where where crease is like explaining kim sung young to daniel you know like it's like civil even though daniel backstabs him like i feel like that's the setup for like uh for a 
a working together sort of thing. I, I, I truly think so. Even though I think both avenues are still possible, I want him to have a redemptive arc because, like, I also don't want to lose the the meaning in some of my uh, favorite scenes from past seasons. Like, I love that conversation in the supermarket that he has with Amanda, and I just mm -hmm. love some of the decisions that he makes during the during the All Valley tournament too. And I feel like if he went back to being a bad guy again, like all of those would be for nothing. And I don't want those moments to lose their value. Yeah. Listen, he's still a bad guy. You know, he's not, he's not, he's not an angel for, for, you know what I mean? But, um, but you know, he, he wants to, like, I loved like John, Josh and Hayden, like they have, they write these characters so good. So it's like, you know, the whole therapy scene or the counseling scene, you know, where he's seeing all the different yeah. people, the whole time I'm watching that, like, you know that they're going somewhere with it. You know, he's having this, this these conversations with all these different people. I'm like, where are they going with this? What's the takeaway? You know, and then it's that final line that gets it for me. Like, where, where Johnny tells him, like, you wanted, that, you wanted all your students to be like you. And he says, and Chris says, no, I wanted them to be better than me. And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, there you go. It's like he, he just wanted what was best for them. And he knew he – He's like admitting, he's like, I'm not a perfect person. Like, I want you to be better. Like, that was his, like, that's why he was a teacher. And I know he had his methods, but, you know, he was trying to make kids better. He wasn't trying to make them him 2.0. Chris did some very bad things, but I will fully believe that that has been his intentions and his hopes since day one. And it's just, he doesn't know how, how to go about achieving that in the right way. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of similar with, with Terry too. So one of the questions I asked uh, Thomas during our interview and his answer just like broke my heart. I asked him what season four, episode one, Terry would think of where he landed in the season five finale. Would, would that early season four, Terry even believe that he was capable wow. of doing such things? And Great he question. Said, he said, no. And I'm like, dude, he was on a good path. He was in a good place. And then Chris just stepped in and like pulled all these demons out again. He could have been fine. He could have not hurt anyone. And then like, look what he did. That is that, that's a very good question. I love that question. His answer just like crushed my heart to pieces, though. It didn't have to be this way. Yeah. It, it it's like we're at season five and just seeing these like character progressions, like even like these writers are so good. I'm just like mind blown. Like, like Johnny right now, like season one, Johnny is not any is not cut to be a dad. Not cut to be a dad or a husband or a father, any of that. But season five, Johnny is like the best dad you can ask for. Like episode three, when he's like, you know, like baby proofing his whole house. That was my favorite scene. That was like the funniest scene. <laughs> he's I'm, just so good. He's so nice. He's such I was a good very person. impressed with his escape room effort. <laughs> Oh my very, god, they played Bon Jovi. They played Bon Jovi. Clever. I kind of wanted to see them like play the escape room too. That that should be a great Cobra Kai pop-up. They should build Johnny's escape room somewhere. <laughs> a Cobra Kai escape room. I Terry Silver that. locks you in a room. Oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> I would sign up for that in a heartbeat. That'd be fun. What do you think about well, we're filming this before se season five has like officially come out, but what do you think about like I've seen some comments? And I would agree on this. I feel like the promotion's a little, a little lesser than season four. Or is not, it just that there's other stuff going on? I'm not going to deny that. I like. I understand. I understand that that response. I mean, I guess this is like a bigger industry response to something like that. But I think, I think we're we're just feeling that more so than ever. Is that? It's like even when season four came out, the world was like we were we were in a pandemic peak again. The world was like kind of shut down. We were all like locked in our houses for the most part and hyper focused on on the shows and the films that we're really into. And, you know, like film festivals and conventions weren't fully up and running and, and big budget blockbusters weren't hitting left and right again. There's just like so much content now. I again, I wonder if. I wonder if the amount of new shows and films that we're getting is just making it feel like we're getting less promotion or 
you know, again, like Netflix has had some changes too. Maybe they're like restructuring what they're thinking budget wise. And maybe we actually are getting less promotion, but in Cobra's in Cobra Kai's case, the good thing is that it has an extremely large established fan base that are going to watch this show, whether or not they promote it as much as maybe they have in the past. But I don't know. In my mind, I have to imagine that Netflix knows how incredibly valuable this show is. So they've got to be pushing it as much as they think they need to push it. Yeah. Also, you know, the past seasons have come out in seasons three and four came out like December, January, Christmas time. You know, that's when yeah. oh, like that. And that's when everybody's home. Like, you know, summer, everyone's out. Like, I know me, I'm like, you know, I'm out doing stuff. It's summer. It's nice out. School's starting now. Like, but December is like a, I don't know. I like that. time. It's, it's, I'm glad we're getting it now, but, um, but yeah, I, I asked John, Josh and Hayden about that too. Oh, really? <laughs> You're think, asking them yeah, all the questions. You know, just like, lo like loosely, they basically said, you know, it was Netflix decisions and like, it, it just fell out this way. But you know, if, if I were in charge and if I were making all the decisions for Cobra Kai, I kind of liked the, the, uh, you know, Christmas, New Year's time event feeling of a new season of this show dropping. So I might have stuck with that. But again, I think the show has a built in fan base. And I think the fact that this show appeals to, you know, so many different types of people, so many different generations, I think it's going to be fine no matter what. But I miss the Christmas, New Year's release time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm liking this conversation and I want to ask you, okay. Ready? This is this is gonna be a good one. Okay. If you were like, think of like Kathleen Kennedy at Lucasfilm. If you were, if you were like the president of Sony and Cobra Kai, like may, let's say let's say mainly Cobra Kai, like Cobra okay. Kai, Counterbalance <laughs> Entertainment, whatever you want to call it, and you made not like not not story decisions, but you made decisions on like, is a movie coming out? Are we getting books, games? what let's say let's say you know this this year you're figuring stuff out for next year like what like what what kind of stuff do you get out like how do you how do you expand cobra kai they they're like we want this to be star wars what do you do what what's your yeah. thing bringing up <laughs> star wars as an example this is this is like me putting like my business industry hat on i love cobra kai whatever they release i will take it like, I will watch it. I will read it. I will play a game. I don't care what it is. But I am thinking about some of the other big, big, big franchises out there. Star Wars tried to expand. I think that they're doing it really well in some senses. But I don't think that expansion plan went as well as they had hoped. And then even when I think about Marvel, like, I am loving all the shows that they're releasing. And I, I do really like a lot of the movies that we got this year. But it's a lot. And I can understand it being overwhelming to maybe the more casual fan. And none of these shows, films, or franchises can exist unless they have the hardcore fan and the casual fan. So I don't necessarily want to oversaturate the market with so much Cobra Kai that someone feels like, well, like now I can't keep up. It's too much. So I'm just going to tap out. That's the only risk that I feel like doing that run. So if I was running things... I would, I would green light a season six and seven ASAP. I would call season seven the ending. That's only if John, Josh, and Hayden think that that's the, the logical place to end the story. I really trust their instincts in that respect. But then I would have a spinoff series overlap with that final season. So that way, when Cobra Kai proper ends, we still have another series that's able to, you know, carry on Karate Kid Cobra Kai traditions. Because I think that's worthwhile, too. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a. I like that. I like that. I'm yeah, not reasonable. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that, and like that's very true because I'm not. Uh, I'm a Star Wars guy. I'm not a Marvel guy, and I see all the different Marvel stuff. I like Spider Man and Iron Man, but other than that, it's like I see all this stuff coming out. It's like, how am I supposed to get into this? It's too much. It's, it's. I don't. Want I don't have time to like watch like all of these like oh no you got to watch this show and that movie i'm like oh god no i'm okay i used to i used to very much be not not only i mean i'm still like that but in addition to being like that i was also someone who like 
thoroughly enjoyed the period of time between releases where I could overanalyze the previous release and theorize for future movies and shows, but they're coming at us like so fast and, and nonstop that now I haven't had any time to, you know, like interact with other fans of those properties or come up with my crazy theories for the next big thing. And like that takes that takes away a little bit of the fun. Yeah, yeah. I I I just I just guess I wish I wish like this show just had like I it's just unfortunately it's never gonna be Star Wars level not not in terms of like story because like some of the, like the Cobra Kai is better than some of the stuff that Star Wars is doing right now but in terms of just scale I just I wish I wish it were like that it's not gonna be like that but like I want them to just like I don't know like I I want I want Cobra Kai and Karate Kids have returned to the theaters. I want that. I and wouldn't I want, mind that. That'd be cool. That'd be so awesome. And I want like, mm. and I think they should open up like, I think they should open up like real Cobra Kai dojos. That's, that's something that I think might be a smart move. I mean, I can't, so I, can't cool. even, I can't even begin to wrap my head around the idea of like Netflix owned karate dojos, but I don't know. I do. I do think that, there is something like fun and exciting in that. I just like what what makes a Netflix run Cobra Kai dojo different from the many other dojos out there would be the key to that. Yeah, like 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 oh my god, like doing things from the or show like a Cobra Kai karate kid convention where you have demonstrations and the ability to like maybe take seminars or classes and learn from, you know, whether it's the actors who have been training all this time or the stunt folks who work so hard on this show. Like a maybe Star Wars that. celebration, but like a Cobra Kai celebration. Oh my well, God. Look, look at how many people come out to see the actors at cons all across the country, if not the world. There's, there's people that would turn up to that. Oh my God. Oof. Yeah, I think they should go there. I love that. I love, there's I so, love that. There's so many. There's so many avenues. Oh man. Um, okay, wait. So, so going back to season five, what what else? There's so much. There's okay. so much. I have one thing for you. This is yeah. the only. This is the only thing that like noticeably disappointed me. Uh, but I understand it has to happen to some characters. I think that Dimitri and Eli were sidelined this season. In particular, I, I, Dimitri. Yeah, and that I, makes I, me I a agree. little sad. I think Gianni is so good in that role. I love his energy. I love the comedic value he brings to this series, and I also really like Dimitri's journey in terms of like finding himself and his inner strength more through karate. And he just like wasn't there for scenes that I thought he should be there for. At the the it was it was the end of episode six when they were all bowing he wasn't there yeah i know is I that what you're talking too. about I was like, That's, what? that was one of the ones the other time something happened they actually like verbally addressed that where he wasn't with them and then he made he like shows up and says i was at my job or something which like i get it yeah but i don't know with everything they had teed up to with um eli and dimitri reuniting and being binary brothers again I just thought that I was going to get to explore a little more of that friendship or, or even just see more of it for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I definitely think the two, and I liked, I liked Eli, you know, Hawk at the tournament that he got to compete, but ultimately that was really all he did and battle Tori at the water park. It's like, you have you watched lost? The series I've watched most of it. Okay. So I, I love Lost. So so it's like, okay, I understand Cobra Kai is not Lost. But like, I feel like, I mean, now that you're introducing all these characters, like, I'm not going to say this is what they should do because like, you know, the story is so good. But like, as like a selfish fan who just wants more, like, I, I would, I would think it would be cool to like, you know, have more episodes and like each episode rather than like you know just evenly distribute everybody all the time and like some characters like are like Kenny like didn't even really do anything until episode 4 you know so it's like when he was a main character last season like there was no Kenny home life stuff really mm -hmm. this season um so like what if like you know each episode kind of like focused on a different character and you extended the episodes like 
because like you could have fixed that Hawk Dimitri solution by having one episode, like just extend it more and have like a Dimitri episode where you just focus more on him. And then like you get like a whole backstory episode, like a character driven, then you have other stuff. And then next episode you Hawk and you just extend the story and it just adds more layers. And I don't, th I think there's a way to do it without it being too drawn out. I feel like there's mm -hmm. a way of doing it. It's like, I want what you're saying, but then I look at the overall roadmap of the show overall and each individual season, and I feel like they're doing as much as they possibly can. It's like, I know this is going to happen to some characters, but like the idea of doing, you know, a Cobra Kai anthology series spinoff where, you know, maybe we, we spend time in one character's world per episode, like that could be a cool way to expand the story. It also... It's like in talking to the the actors about the production process of making the show, like it just doesn't seem like they have time to make any more. I, f I forget how Ralph mm. Macchio referred to this, but like he told, like they were talking about fight scenes and he's like, yeah, by the time we shot this, we were already like, man, I forget the terminology he used, but it was something where they have like two crews operating at the same time. And I'm like, my God, if you guys are doing that, I don't think I could demand even more scenes from this show. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, it, yeah, it's like you just want more. Like, I feel like it, the show doesn't have like time to really just like, like slow it down and really like explore like, like Dimitri, you don't really know what he's thinking. Hawk, you don't really know what he's going through. Like, especially like Dimitri's parents reacting to him, like getting a broken arm, like, you know, like, or like, you know, all that stuff. It's like, that. Yeah. Like, like, or like what happened to Brooks, you know, Kyler's friend, like what happened there? Like, like, it's like, I don't know. I feel like it would just, it's like, it's just very quick. It, it, it it's a little unrealistic in that sense that like you don't really get to see. I just wish I want more and I, I want more and I know I shouldn't. <laughs> so I like, I have to tell myself this all the time when I'm watching shows and movies and when I'm reviewing them is like, as long as I get what I need from the main storyline that they're trying to sell me, I need to be content. And also when there are little cracks in, in someone's story, then I need to like see the fact that the reason that I want more is because that person is making a big impression. And also mm. I really think there's something to be said for, for, I mean, really like not even just, I was about to call it fan fiction, but it's just, it, it's engaging with the material and it's, it's an opportunity to be able to fill in the blanks for yourself and engage with material on that level versus being like fed every single detail and every single perspective. And, I don't know. I, I really do truly see value in that. But again, we've established I'm greedy with Cobra Kai. I will never say no to more content. <laughs> yeah. And and who knows? Maybe if they were to put Dimitri in more scenes, maybe you would overdo it. Like, you know what I mean? You, it you, could. you never know. Like, it could. like the thing that I'm saying I want, maybe if they did that, if they did episodes focusing on Kenny or Hawk, maybe it's like, no, I'll get back to Terry Silver. <laughs> like, I think I really do think they used Kenny pretty well, though. Like, I know he yeah. doesn't really have as big of a presence until about halfway through the season. But like, like Dallas makes Kenny scary. Ooh. And oh, look scary. at Kenny. He is one of the smallest and youngest of the bunch. But he was easily one of the most threatening Cobra Kai students throughout this season of the show. I was so impressed by his performance. He was good. He was good. Oh, my God. Wait. Mitch. I was like. No, well, first off, they mentioned his Not name. Cool. But that, I, I, <laughs> my reaction to that was probably the biggest reaction to any scene. I was like, <gasps> actually, actually, Kreese dying. Uh, but, but that was probably second. Mitch, Mitch is the Mitch reveal. I was like, Mitch, how could you do that? It makes sense. It makes sense. But, no, how could you do that, Mitch? I, I, because I thought, okay, Mitch was actually, you're, you might find this surprising. Mitch was like my most improved character in season three. <laughs> like, okay, I can see that. I, I loved Mitch because I thought him getting kicked out of Cobra Kai and like, like being like treated like a nerd and then going to Eagle Fang. I just, and then by the end when he's like fighting Cobra Kai in the Christmas sweater, he's like, come on. I just found it so interesting. I was like, wow. 
Mitch. And now for him to do this crap, like, screw you, Mitch. <laughs> My excuse for Mitch is that, like, when, I don't know, like, he's like he's just a kid who thinks he knows what he wants. And if he <laughs> held on to any of that desire to be in Cobra Kai, like, of course he would screw them over. And, and like, look at what Stingray does. It's like, for all I know, if we got a Mitch, like, side episode where we could just focus on him, for all we know, like, deep down, he, like, knows what he's doing is wrong. But the pull to Cobra Kai and and wanting all of that is too strong for him to handle. And like we see that with Stingray a bit too. Yeah, yeah. There could have been something there. And I, I love like once again, these writers are so good. It's like, you know, um Bert's like penis breath. How could you? And then Mitch is like, I don't know. Maybe because they don't call me penis breath. Like, I like they have snacks, they, like they have cool geese, like we don't even have a roof. And then Kyra's like, okay, yo, shut up, penis breath. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> like the whole reason why he left is just oh god, Kyra's. I love Kyra's like my favorite character. He's like one of my favorites. He's like I, my top I enjoy, five. I enjoy him quite a bit. And I love the uh like the very last line that Kyler has <laughs> where he's talking to the uh the reporters and like just like basically spewing nonsense and like spelling his name and stuff. I feel like I, I get the feeling, I don't know this for sure, but I feel like Joe might have improvised some of that. And if he did, it was spot on. <laughs> He's so good. He's so good. Like, and then okay, I need to tell you, like, one of my like I feel like this is a scene that like people will kind of like it's one of those smaller scenes that people I don't feel like would really like analyze like this. But like it's one of my favorite scenes that really got me Um, beginning of episode five when Stingray walks into the Cobra Kai dojo and everybody's like, what is he doing here? And Silver is like. This man represents Cobra Kai, like integrity, courage, like go like and Stingray's terrified. It's like it's like a psychopath, like, you know, like like, you know, giving him this special treatment. And mm-hmm. I there's something about that, like Stingray getting the special treatment from Silver. And it's like in a threatening way that's so compelling. And that scene is just like freaking brilliant. Everything about that works. Terry knows exactly how to manipulate everyone that walks into that dojo. And Stingray is just like so, so vulnerable. I also love the scene where they finally get him to confess. It was yeah. very oh smart. My God. That was yeah. very well written. Yeah, yeah, with the with the dungeons and jag yeah. dungeons and dojos. Dungeons and dojos, excuse me. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Stingray Stingray had a good um arc in that like, yeah. last episode. Like I'm- I'm glad that they kept bringing him back too. That felt like a character that could have come and gone in what was it, season two, and then that would have been it. But I like the way that they keep adding him back into the story. Yeah, yeah. He had a bigger arc than I thought he was gonna yeah. have. Yeah. Oh, significantly. Yeah, yeah. He was he was the whole like finale, like set up crazy, crazy. What do you think about Mike? <laughs> Sean Kanan was freaking brilliant. I I felt so sad for him. <laughs> it's just so sad that I don't know, like bad things have happened to some of these characters, but having like your whole like family owned business <laughs> burned to the ground. I love, I love the ending though. And I love the delivery of these lines too. When Daniel goes to him, is that a Rembrandt? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I should be able to get a new furniture store with it or something to that effect. But I really, I enjoyed the return of Mike. And I, I think that that's a good example of, like just how much to use a character like that. Like, of course I wouldn't have minded seeing more of him, but I didn't necessarily need more. And I think he, his inclusion moved the story along just enough. I agree. I agree. I, I want to see more of him in season six, just because I love his character, but I thought like they did a great job with him. I, I, lo- <laughs> I love him in chosen. I love like chosen yeah. is just oh, but that. Wait, that was episode three. That episode has got to be, Oh my god, so like so much happened in that episode. I love like everything with like, you know, the, the, and then chosen with the couch, you know. <laughs> and then he beat up all the people outside. He's like, we're going to need to call ambulance. Day. Like <laughs> I feel like every single thing that chosen did just like tickled me. Oh, but he's so and <laughs> I was talking to someone about um the character of chosen and he said something really interesting. He said that chosen like is such a unique character because he can like have all these funny scenes, but then like 
he's still like a threat to kill so when you get yeah. like to the end when you get to the end where he's like trying to kill silver like he's not that same butt naked chosen from episode one well he is but he, he has like he can like flip whenever he wants and that it's... only comes through that successfully through performance like Yuji, Yuji oh just God. absolutely now he knew how to balance all of like the different elements and qualities of that character i love the club scene and i love like <laughs> was it like long island iced tea short island iced tea yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that i thought he was great and all that did you interview him yes yes oh my god oh my god awesome <laughs> the the big burning question that i had to ask him was would chosen have killed terry had johnny not distracted him in the end did he, he said no it? he said no but he didn't he didn't like flat out say no. He said a couple of things that would essentially imply a no, like the idea of, you know, like having Miyagi on his shoulder and hearing Daniel's word in his head, words in his head. Like he never would have actually gone through with it. But it's like he flat out says that he's willing to kill before that moment comes. So I don't yeah. know. I don't deep down, I don't think Chosen ever would have killed. Well, I think he would have killed if he had to. So like you know if there if, if like if Silver's like about to stab okay. him you know like he ha he obviously has weapons you know what I mean uh, so he could he could he was trying to he wasn't just blocking the whole time he was trying to get get at Silver but because he knocked Silver's weapon out of his hand and had him you know it was more like okay you lose yeah that's it I um, think the the way that he said it too was something like uh, it it was like um, I came here to defeat you and I and I did that so my job is done kind of thing. Defeat doesn't necessarily mean kill. Yeah. And what I found really interesting, like there's so much to read into. And it's like, I, I, I'll say it like every time. I have to say it every time. Like the writers are so good. Like I'm just before everything. It's like the line that stood out to me. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Chosen says, I'm not afraid to kill, which is very, you know, that, that's like, okay, we're learning. Well, we we kind of knew that about Chosen. Silver's response I find fascinating because you know he could say like yeah me me too but he says I'm not afraid to die you know like the fact that he said that which what are your thoughts on that him saying that rather than like yeah I'm not afraid to kill too I'm not afraid to die like oh. I think I think he's being honest I think he is he's like haunted by his past in that respect a little bit and and how fearful he was. I also think he's just like a very linear thinker. Like I think he he views everything as black and white at this point where it's like he's poured everything he has into Cobra Kai. Like he can't like it's not even an option. He can't lose that. So it's like if he loses the things that he thinks he can't lose, what does he have to live for anymore? So he's willing to kind of like lay down and die on the battlefield. <laughs> So yeah. I, I kind of believed when he said that. Yeah, yeah, he he was ready to he was risking it all right there. <laughs> yeah, he's he'll put he will put every single thing he has on the line to get what he wants. And in this particular moment of his life, it's Cobra Kai thriving. Yeah. Two two things I want to ask if you noticed. Okay. Um well one thing, but there were there were two moments. Um musical moments, kind of like or sound effect moments. Uh in the finale. It was it was just two moments in the finale where the first moment was when he took out the sword, um, right? He had the sword and he's like, okay. time to, he's like, the music's like rising, rising, rising time to see what you're really made of music cuts, rips out the sword. And it's like, boom. And then there was another part where he's like telling that like when, when he, he's talking to Johnny who the fist has on the ground, all bloodied up. And he's like, I got to go clean up the mess at the dojo. Like, take care of this music rises, 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 cuts, finish him. Did you yeah. notice those two sound effect parts? I feel like I must have. Cause I think they, those are the types of things that feed into the overall energy and intensity of a scene. And that's something this show has always done. Well, I feel like their stunt team usually gets a whole lot of Emmy love, but Really, the sound design and and the folks responsible for the music should be getting some uh, some credit there as well. I feel like as you were describing that, one of the main uh, visuals that popped into my head—it's one of my favorite shots of the entire season—was when um, 
Terry and Chosen had just started fighting, and it's almost like like a silhouetted shot mm. of them moving across the side of the pool, like slightly silhouetted. I think it's just like it's such a beautiful shot that has like literally every element feeding into how intense that moment is. And the music, it's like it's like I, I don't I don't I don't know how to describe it. The music, like, the so lighting. Ominous. Oh my goodness! Like, geez, wow. And I like prop props to Netflix. For not giving anything from that finale away. Yeah. The only thing that they gave away was in the image. There was an image of Carmen and Amanda in a dress. That was it. They Nothing. did a, that promo campaign did a real good job of of giving us enough to to feel excited and to look forward to the new season, but without revealing a single thing too soon. Yeah, because I was my biggest fear was that. I was like, I was like, no, they can't do that. But I was, I was just like, I don't know, I don't know. I thought that the the psychai taikai when we saw the trailer and we saw Hawk fighting Kenny and Devin fighting Sam, I was like, that's cool, but that better not be the finale. Yeah, that There's better no not be the finale. No I know. I was, I was, I was like, I was hoping. I was like, you can't go from season four to that. Like, no. so, so this finale, yeah, God, wow, it was great. And like, to think about everything that happened, like I was, I was, I was like watching it again today, and and editing, like the editing with that finale, from Crease to to Barnes and to Chosen to like or to, like to all the scenes, especially with the dojo and because I feel like the biggest thing, like it, and this is like 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 I'll, like editors, it's just like especially with the finale, it's like when you have two plots going on you have or no you know you had like four or five going on actually yeah yeah there were a bunch it was daniel stingray amanda carmen that's one then you had johnny versus the fist then you had terry versus chosen then you had everything at the dojo and then like yeah so there was like four things going on and it's just fascinating fascinating to me how they cut back and forth mm -hmm. to it and something that i really loved what they did was um with the chosen versus silver fight, they cut like twice to like Johnny for 30 seconds, but it's not like they cut to the, the dojo, which I I'm glad they didn't. They kept the, they kept the, the feeling, you know, that's part of the reason why I was so impressed by this. And I found this finale fight refreshing. And that's like one of the most difficult things that they have to do season to season now, because especially with the one in the school in season two, it's like the second they gave us that, you set the bar so incredibly high and you give viewers the feeling like, I want more of that. I want more of the same, but you can't mm -hmm. ever deliver more of the same. You got to keep upping the bar every single season. And you know, a lot of a lot of the times they have been doing that, but I loved how refreshing it was after the final fight, which was incredible of last season with the tournament, how like singular and character focused all that was. It was about, you know, how good they got at karate and seeing that on display as they battle 1v1. Here it was about them using their, their skills and, and uh, using what they learned and working as a team. And it felt so different. It felt so different to me for that reason. But then also, when you start to intercut other things, that design gives it a completely different feel that makes it really epic, but in a completely different way than past seasons. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy to think that, like, you know, John, Josh, and Hayden could write this, 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 this. But you know, when you're when you're editing fight scenes, like, you know, like, like I even like looking at season three. Um, I love season three finale, but you, you know, you're cutting from the house fight to Ali, Daniel, yeah. Johnny, Car Carmen, or no, my bad, Amanda. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, like, uh, this, this is like constantly just like, and like the fact that you have chosen versus silver and Daniel versus silver in the same episode yeah. and it doesn't feel rushed and it's only 45 minutes, but it's like. Oh God. Editors are also magicians. <laughs> I can't wrap my brain around how they do their work. The whoever directed that episode, oh my goodness. Like, whew, whew. Like that, and 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 I can't get over costume designing for silver, like designing for silver in that episode. Like when he, and like when he's in that dojo, when he comes back to the dojo and he's like, that's it. That like 
that's what makes you turn on me? Like, their senseis broke into my house, attacked me. Like, like, oh my God. And he's like, I could kick your ass right now, Danny boy. Like, oh God, it's so good. He's just yeah. like the blood on his – and also like the light, the like the – the atmosphere, like the coloring, everybody, it's, oh my God. It's That's so what this show does so well. It's, you know, it's so easy to like focus on and praise one specific element of a series like this, but it doesn't work unless every department is firing on all cylinders and they all understand how their work has to interconnect. That is the only, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's another reason why Cobra Kai should also be nominated for a series Emmy as well, but yeah. Not this year, it didn't happen, but we can mm. still hope for next year. They deserve it in my in my book, at least. Yeah, yeah, just like different things. And then there was uh, when Miguel and Sam broke up, and you know Miguel is like holding in all his emotion, and th the fact that he like, he's walking away, his back is to Sam. Sam's still in the background, and the camera's just walking back with him, mm -hmm. and he's like breaking down, like just like brilliant camera work there that like. You know, keep it all in one shot, and you still have Sam in the frame, but Miguel's back is to her. Oh, God. This I, team knows what they're doing. They are so they are a well-oiled machine. I can't I see I can't believe how far they've come in five seasons. And then really, that's the reason why they're able to, you know, like Ralph said, double up and shoot uh two crews at once. Because they know exactly what they're doing. They're really good at their jobs to their core, but they've had all the experience and they know how to get this stuff done and they know how to get it done well. Yeah. Th this season, it didn't feel like there was any, like, like sometimes you could, like, watch something and you could feel like, okay, like, they, they had a little bit of a budget there. Like, this, you don't feel like that. Like, like oh, you know, you know what took me out of it? You know what took me out of the show? Um, Tori's apartment complex. Because it's the same as Johnny's. It's literally the same, just with grass. Like you, you could tell it's the same exact it was set. Similar. It was we like don't, we don't spend too much time there, though. Yeah. So, but that took me out of it. I'm like, oh, okay. But like this season, I was like that, especially the finale. But everything, it felt like, like you can't tell that there was like a budget. It just, it felt good. It felt really. Yeah. Good. It. It feels it feels right. It feels like a team of people making the most of every single penny that they have. And, you know, it, with any show or movie, like you always want more than the budget you have. Definitely. Yeah. You always so, want more time and you always want more money. Definitely. Yeah. Is, is there is there any like other big parts that we're missing? I mean, there's so much, but like, like what we're missing anything. What are we missing? Oh, we're we're missing um, the the new uh, family connection. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I can't believe we we haven't brought up uh, Jessica. So, I'll t I'll tell you this: when I like when I'm watching the show, like I recorded all my reactions to like me watching, and when I see something crazy like Chris coming to life. I'm like, what the heck? What the, what the, like freaking out. But with that one, when she showed up, I was like, I couldn't even get a word out. I was so shocked. And, and it makes perfect sense though. You know, brilliant. you know what I like, I like about like, I, I had a fairly big reaction. It's not like I was like, I don't care about this. I liked how it was a different kind of reaction though. Like there was so, there was something about it that just felt so right and natural. It wasn't like, ha, huh, cameo, another one. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, like I get this relationship and why you are here and the influence you are having on our main characters right now. This all makes sense. This all feels real, and I like it. Yeah, yeah. That that's what that's what the writers do so well. Because I, I was like. How are you going to bring Jessica Andrews into this story? That would be like, like it's like I want to see her, but how? But like, are you kidding me? Like the fact that they were able, because it makes perfect sense. Daniel and her stayed friends all these years, and that's how she met Amanda. Like, oh my god, genius! I would have never thought of that. And it's a different, it's a completely different thing than anything we've seen before. Rather exactly. than Crease and Terry, Cobra Kai, Ali, Komiko, you know. I like it being like a very basic human thing of people staying in touch too. It's not like I've got to like rush off and, you know, like 
find someone to help me in this karate war. It's yeah. just, it's something that's just very realistic and believable to me and low, low key. And I think, I think shows need low key things in order to make it feel realistic sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That was just like really cool. I was just, it's just like, it's so funny to think that now that Amanda is like connected to the universe. Yeah. So like literally like during karate kid, you know, Amanda's her cousin out doing whatever i don't know <laughs> like, i mean it's a it's a fun thing to think about when you rewatch karate kid 3 that you know out there somewhere in the world like it, it not that like you wouldn't think that a character like amanda existed in the world whether we know about family connections or not but it's like a nice little extra thing to think about that fills out this world overall more yeah at the mac and cheese she brought the mac and cheese for daniel because daniel loves his mac and cheese like <laughs> so mac and cheese look good <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. It's so funny. Oh, I'll tell, I'll tell you this. Okay. Here. It just goes back to like, I love everything about the season, but there's just like, I just, there's stuff that I just want more of. And I'll tell you what I was like, I really wanted because Anthony, did you interview Anthony Griffin? Yes, I did. Frick yeah. He's, 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 like my, cool. he's my favorite. He, he's got a nice season. Yeah. 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 He, he's one of my favorites. So I really wanted sam to train anthony because like they, they i i knew we were gonna get the s sister brother bonding which we've never seen before and we did but i wanted sam to re like train him like like kind she's of like not uh, ready she's not ready to train him this season next season next season next season, next I, season. I, I i hope I want I it. just it the two of them, just the two of them though. I think it wouldn't have been good for Anthony this season to be trained by Sam, who was still figuring out her own stuff. True. But I, th I think this season like taught her that, you know, she needs to be a big sister and a leader for him. And I think we're going to see that kind of pay off in future seasons. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I just wanted to see, I just want to see it happen. I want to see Anthony kick some butt. I love Anthony. <laughs> I feel like that's going to happen. I He's think that it. they're 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 paving the way to that being, you know, the ultimate for Anthony. This is the son of the Karate Kid we're yeah. talking about. It's like it's like the son of like Anakin Skywalker. Like you know. I think they're going to pave the way to Anthony being a better fighter, but I'm also like hopeful that they're going to do it in a way where like like, you know that Anthony is a different kind of fighter contributing something different to the dojo than Sam is. You know what yeah. I mean? They're, they're clearly two very different kids. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Did you notice the White Castle reference, by the way? The Harold and Kumar. That? <laughs> you know, You know, John, Josh, and Aiden, yeah, yeah. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? Sam and Anthony were eating yes, White Castle. White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was laughing. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, I have to ask you. Saikai Taikai. Yes. Who, who's winning it? <laughs> <laughs> Even though we really don't know anything like who's going to be doing it. Like, All right. If you thinking had to just this, say. Thinking this through, if it happens in season six, in order to figure this out, my brain is saying I should be asking myself, who would need to win the Psychi Taikai most at this point in their journey? Mm in order to move forward as a character. I'm going to go back to one of the OGs, like one of the one of the older older kids, and I think I think I might say is there is there a boys and girls division? Do I get to pick two? I have no is idea. Is it just one? But you can you can pick two if you want. <laughs> well, the first the first one that I was going to go to was Tori because I feel like like Tori really went through it with having won and then having that win taken away by someone else having cheated. And if Tori wins, I think it could be a really pure and beautiful moment of Sam genuinely being happy for Tori and the win meaning even more because they've repaired the relationship and Tori knows that Sam is happy for her. Mm -hmm. So I'll say Tori. And then I feel, I feel like, Okay, I lie. I'm going to walk back something that I previously said. Maybe that's how, like, Kenny hits a better place in his life. Because I don't think Miguel or Robbie necessarily need the win. But more so than anything, Robbie could benefit from training Kenny and training him to the point that he does win. And Kenny seems to 
Kenny seems to need karate and he needs someone to reframe it to be a more positive thing in his life. And that could kind of cement it if he trains in a better way and it pays off and he wins. Mm, Tori like and Kenny, that. those are my answers. Okay, I like <laughs> that. I'm going to go very basic but i'll ex i'll explain oh, why and, and, okay. it, and, it, and it's basic but it but but it's i don't know i gotta go with miguel okay i gotta go with miguel and and i'll i'll explain why like season one episode one like you know miguel miguel like you know none of these other characters are even in it you know it, it's like miguel is like and john josh and Hin have said Miguel is the karate kid of this story. He is. Like, even with every other character, Miguel is the, the main kid that we're focusing on. And I just feel like, you know, I'm cool with Tori and Hawk winning the All Valley in season four. Like, okay, you know, it's fine. But if this is like the last thing, if this is the big final tournament thing, I feel like Miguel's just got to take home the gold because like, you know, we, we, we watch Miguel's evolution. He's, he's trained longer than any of these people. Maybe Sam, well, there's Sam, but like, but, but Miguel's just been there since the beginning. And this story, the story is about him. I know there's other characters, but the overall story I think is about Miguel. And I think that would be a great way to do it. Like okay. I love Kenny, but I don't, I don't know if he has the experience. I love Tori, but like, she already got her like I feel like I feel like Miguel like we I feel like we need to be reminded that this is Miguel's <laughs> this is this is it's about Miguel. All right. <laughs> that's me. Miguel's my favorite character, so I'm a little biased, but that's how I feel. <laughs> I, I can get behind that. I wouldn't mind if that's where this all wound up landing in the end. I think that would make sense too. In like a and like I, I understand that's also like kind of the predictable thing, but I think we're kind of beyond like I feel like like you, like I, I don't want them to do like oh Dimitri wins because it was unexpected like you know what I mean like Miguel's the best fighter so like Miguel wins. Well, there's also ways to do the predictable thing and still have it you know be meaningful. It's like the exactly. the idea that I keep getting hung up on for obvious reasons is like now that they're all not enemies, they're all going to work together. And if if like Miguel's win is reflective of all of them finally coming together and working together to help him power through to that point. I would believe that. And I think I'd be very satisfied by that too. Yeah, exactly. He's like, he's like the balance of all of it. And Karate Kid, look at karate, the, the movie. Like, was there any question who was going to win that tournament? Like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> also, you knew with Hawk versus Eli, you knew, um, Hawk versus Eli, Hawk versus Robbie. <laughs> that would be a cool fight. Hawk versus Eli. That'd be fun. There was an internal battle that was that. Uh, yes, yes. But you knew that Eli was winning that from the beginning because of the whole point system like you just knew i wonder if there's an adult division of the psycho guy that's what, that's what i was thinking that i was like i was i was like wondering like are we gonna but it, and, and also it's the big thing is like this is why okay this is why i feel like cobra kai has to be in it and i know it's like they went through all this crap but like this is why i feel like they have to be in it because like you can't have them compete in this world tournament and they're not be an enemy who's the enemy you need an enemy. Well, you need a bad guy. You okay. Need a I have I have like a really out of I don't know how much this pertains to Psycho Tai Guy, but this is a really out of left field, not prediction, because I still think I'm going with what I said before about how Cobra Kai evolves. But if Kreese redeems himself and they maintain the because like another thing that this show has often done is like try to sell that, you know, the right the the right path can be different for everyone so like maybe the ultimate end for cobra kai is just solidifying that we all don't have to be one all these dojos can exist and if crease does enough to you know rehabilitate and make himself a better person maybe they give him back cobra kai 
I yeah. feel like I'm re as I explained that I felt like I was reaching though. <laughs> no, no, I remember. I remember last time we talked, you said that like, like the series ending with like Johnny or Kreese, like having Cobra Kai and it's like, like a better Cobra Kai. And I, I, I like that theory. I My still think, I still think the better theory with Cobra Kai being a better Cobra Kai is all of the main senseis coming together and making a, making it a better place together. Like if they take it over next season. But here's the thing though. Like I like that, but it's also I'm thinking about Daniel, and I don't know if Daniel would ever do that. <laughs> I know, yeah. It's like it's like like Daniel freaking hates the cover guy with a passion. It's like like you know like for him to like, it, it would have to be like him like really putting his beliefs like away. It's like, so you're saying like, it's just uh it's just because the name and the brand is so popular among all the kids in the valley that we take this franchise and we kind of reimagine it not because they they want to, but they kind of have. To. No, I, I, I can see a world where they genuinely want to like where like everything is so far out there already. And Cobra Kai is such a big part of karate in the Valley that maybe they could be a, maybe they could be more effective if they do good with Cobra Kai rather than wipe it all away and have to start fresh. Mm. And also like, you know, there, there is definitely, uh, there is definitely value in like sucking out the poison. But if you like, especially actually, if I'm thinking this through from Daniel's perspective, like Cobra Kai gave him nightmares. Like he thinks it ruined his, his life at times. And he looks at it as bad, bad, bad. What, like, what is more effective? Like, trying to completely block out and kill what was bad, or maybe reframing it in a more positive light and moving forward that way? Like, which which path is more mm. effective? I don't know. So, what do you think happens to Miyagi Do then? I think that. Okay, I'm going to see this through. I'm not going to back away from this prediction. I think they all come together and they make Cobra Kai a better dojo. And it's a dojo that teaches a variety of different forms of karate, including Miyagi-Do. So it's called Cobra. The dojo is called Cobra Kai. It's called Cobra Kai. And within the Cobra Kai dojo, they teach Miyagi-Do. Do they teach Eagle Fang? Yeah, like they, te they teach everything because a student having an understanding of a variety of different forms of karate could give them more tools to use in a tournament. <laughs> I feel like I have not totally sold you on this. No, no, no. I no, I no, no. I, I'm actually like I don't know what my face is like saying, but like I, I'm actually like. I actually like what I really like that. Like I, well, I, I don't that's know. If that's also what, what John, like. Josh, and Hayden have always talked about with their Star Wars influence. The idea that you know, like dark side, yeah, like maybe it's bad, but the light side isn't always good too. It's it's a, a mixture. It's balance. That's what this is all about. So that can yeah. reflect balance. No, I I, th I think that's a great theory. I'm I'm <laughs> actually on board with that. Like, however they do it, I think it's going to end up in a way where you know they're. I, I really like that, like kind of um, taking Cobra Kai and making it like something different because, yeah, the show is called Cobra Kai. You got to keep Cobra Kai, but then also Daniel, you got you need his Miyagi Do, like a balance between everything, and it's kind of like on a widespread level. Like, I think we just uncovered the secrets of the show, Perry. <laughs> and if and if, <laughs> if the show ends this way, my mind will be blown. <laughs> and and if John, Josh, and Hayden, if you guys are listening and you have something different. You should you should take some notes. Like <laughs> we got you, we got you. <laughs> I trust them may, way more than I trust my own creative sensibilities. <laughs> this is a good theory, though. I actually really like that. I feel I feel like that's where they got to go. Where else can they go? Everyone okay. dies or something? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Just just Chris. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I think if anyone dies, it's only going to be him. <laughs> I think so too. But but do you think Silver's going to get out of jail? I don't know. It's like, it's hard for me not to want more of Thomas Ian Griffith in that role, but that to me might feel like dragging, dragging it out to like, he had such a great, like, I really think that Terry Silver had a perfect run in Cobra Kai. You think he's done? I don't know. No, he I kind of see it as a very fitting end for the character in the series. Oh, I, I would know. I would be very upset if that was it. I would actually like, like talk about okay, talk about like another like like moment that would make me quit the show if he wasn't like 
<laughs> if he was done, I would no. I feel like he could come back for like a scene or an episode type thing, but I don't know. I'm like getting the I'm getting the feeling that there was some finality to that. Because also if he comes back, it's not like he could be a big bad figure again. He has been knocked off his pedestal. Maybe, maybe he maybe he winds up talking to um the the therapist that Kreese spoke to in prison. And you know, maybe. Maybe taking himself out of the karate war is a better thing for uh, Silver anyway. Maybe he's able to tap back into the person that he was at the beginning of season four. Oh, I want crazy Silver. <laughs> yeah. I, I, want, I, want, I want messy hair, bloody Silver. <laughs> what if, okay, what if, but what if he like. He breaks out. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. Um, no, like, okay. So I think that. <laughs> I think that Kim Da Un is gonna have like kind of like be his like accomplice outside of jail and like kind of like do like you know all the stuff that he needs done, she's gonna kind of do for him. And I think once he gets out, okay, maybe it's not as simple as taking over Cobra Kai, mm -hmm. but but he has all this these resources. What if he's not the guy? Like, what if it's not like okay, what if he's not running Cobra Kai, but what if there's something pre-existing and he's kind of helping them from the shadows? So he's not like, you know, like standing out as this like Terry Silver, that evil guy is competing, but he's there, but he's not. Well, you know what I mean? I think, I don't think that is out of the realm of possibility because as you were explaining that, it's like if he is pulling the strings from the shadows and then like re-emerges at the end, end, end of the series, and then it's Kreese who has to put a stop to him in order to, you know, save Daniel, Johnny, and the kids. Yeah. That could wind up paving the way to a fitting ending for Kreese, too. A nice, a nice path fight. to redemption. I don't know. Yeah. I also, well, I also would think it would be unfortunate if Sensei Kim was just gone after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's going to have a big role in the next season. I, I, I kind of hope so. I liked her. I liked her. She was funny. <laughs> I think I think some of the fists probably led by her are going to find other students to enter into the Psychai Tai Guy. Yeah, yeah. I think I I think whoever like the fist Cobra Kai Silver like that. I think they're done. You know, getting nerds. They're done. Like I think they're gonna <laughs> like they're done getting those people and training them to be badasses. Like they're gonna go for like the strongest people and like. Who are, like they're gonna get like the Mike Barnes is like from like you know from the eighties like you know what like how he was already a champion they're gonna like get the champions oh, already yeah I so think they've I think they've had their fill of students that they view as subpar so I think yeah. they're gonna go for the best of the best yeah like for this tournament just all out <laughs> it's just, oh you you've seen Joker right the movie yes. Joker do. Were you getting Joker vibes from that final scene of season five? Because that's exactly what I thought of. Wait, how so? With Crease and the oh, and like walk walk, out walking out with the music, Frank get, Sinatra, yeah, it, <laughs> like the cops running yeah, yeah. right past him. It was like, it was. Like, I mean, that's yeah. I think that's a fair connection to make right there. <laughs> yeah, and also all, all, all I could think about when I was watching that particular scene was like. Martin Cove was made for this moment. Like, dude is living it up, having Crease have his moment like this right now. Like, I could feel it, and I like that. Yeah, you, you know what? I, you you know what I find so funny too. It's like you hear all these stories about like prison escapes, like how they're like so like elaborate. Like, all he needed was that key Yellow. card. He needed he Jello needed and a key card. <laughs> what? But but even that, like. You know, he was able to get into that hallway. But it's not like him pretending to be dead is what got him in that room. Because before in episode six, when he went to the therapist or the counselor to say, like, why, why am I recommendation go or why don't you recommend me to get out earlier? He was in that same hallway, you know, with, and the, the door was right there. So it's like, you know, the fact that like all he needed was the key card. It's like funny. <laughs> I liked how the beginnings of the moment when he's being treated, it felt like they almost had like horror movie vibes. It's like the kind of moment where mm. like you think Jason is dead, but then he comes back to life at the last possible second and just like <laughs> destroys everyone around it. That's like essentially what Chris did in that moment. For what? Mercy? Like, he's just like, he's so, and it's like, 
I know you love Martin Cove and I love Martin Cove. So like just seeing it's not even about crease. It's just about Martin. Just love, just love <laughs> it Martin. Is, it is kind of like that. It's like, I want it for, I want the character to have his moment. I want him to have redemption by the end, but I also <laughs> do want it for Marty too. Cause I know how much he believes in crease. I just want to, I would do anything to see the moment where John, Josh and Hayden, like, I feel like they took him out to a really nice restaurant, buttered him up, got him like steaks, <laughs> bread, all the stuff. And it's like, Marty, um, we're having a great night, but um, just want to let you know, you're not coming in until the end of episode five. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> we there. There's more to that clip that I sent you. Oh, there's, more to <laughs> there's, more, there's more to that. It was, a, it was a very, very, very good part of the conversation. <laughs> I love it. Like they like. Yeah, because I I, I love I love that and what what they said about the impact like I I feel like that's so true but you know you really got to explain it to him because he cares so much and it's like for him it's like nah, screw impact like I want to be in it just just put me in it that's what makes all the difference I not that I think that there are creators out there that don't care but if everyone cared about their character and their project like Martin Cove did I feel like we would just be having like nonstop like top level films and shows out there <laughs> i i believe that like if martin cove was like you've seen like some actors who are like disappointed like from movies that they were in and they don't even care they just spoil it like before it comes oh, out because they don't care i feel like marty if, if that was how he died i feel like he would just like be like yeah don't expect no. priest to come back no. like i feel like i feel like he just wouldn't <laughs> i i really do i do think that if they kill off crease i am like I'll say this with a hundred percent certainty: if they kill off Crease, they're gonna do it in the best possible way, and I think it's gonna yeah. be like in a good way, where it's a redemptive thing versus him ending the series as a villain. Yes, I think Marty would be very satisfied with that. Yes, one hundred percent. I expect. I, I want three things, four things <laughs> from 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 Crease's redemption. Number one is he settles he goes up against Terry Silver whether he loses I'm not saying he wins but but he goes up against him and kind of like gets that moment number 2 is he redeems himself in the fact of you know while he's not an angel sunshine's rainbows kind of kittens person he's <laughs> he's a, he's he's a good man kind of He's a, he's a better man. He's a better man. He's trying to be good. He's trying to be good. Just like Johnny was trying to always be good. You know, Crease is trying. And three and four, number three, Johnny needs to realize that Crease always cared about him. Even if even if Crease didn't show in the right ways, Johnny needs to know, like, oh my, like he did. Like I I I I I I care about you. And I need number four. I need Daniel to yes. have respect. I mean, not not love him and say yeah. you're the best, but just just respect. I respect you. I was hoping now. that's where that list would end. Like, <laughs> yeah, it didn't yeah. even have to be him saying I respect you. Like even a pat on the back of acknowledgement, just something from yes. Daniel in that respect, I think is vital. Yes, just like a like a because, because you know he he was in the military, so was Miyagi. I feel like something there where it's like you know some like an understanding, like a. You know, I, obviously we're in very different pages, but like I understand where you're coming from, and like the fact that you, not, yeah, not like a whole conversation where Daniel's saying I respect you, but just like a yeah, like a, even like a nod, like thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Oh my God, well, <laughs> Daniel's like thank you, Chris. Sometimes the solid, uh, like a uh, a silent nod, can be more powerful than actual dialogue that conveys that feeling. So I kind of like the the silent nod or the pat on the back. Yeah, yeah, and like. And like, like, wh why does Crease even like hate Daniel so much? Like, there's not, there, like, there's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just because they have two different opposing philosophies. But if you put that away, who knows? Like, Crease might not even have an issue with Daniel. Like, what? Like, Daniel's not like a bad dude. You know what I mean? It's because Crease was a bully, and Daniel ruined Cobra Kai's track record exactly so like when you move past that then anything's possible i mean the, if robbie and like miguel can like you know end up where they're at like 
I don't know. It cre- increases a little well, more sen his way. Another but. another thing that could wind up happening in the future, especially now that all the kids are on the same page and they're not feuding anymore, is if like the older generation learns from the kids and they end their feud because they set a good mm-hmm. example. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that's that's what. Yeah, like it's with Tori and Sam, like yeah, Miguel, Rob, like Chris. I don't know. I feel like they, they got to do something like that. They got to. And and like just thinking about Crease and his scenes. Well, now, now going back to Thomas, I got to go always go, go back to Thomas. The part like that got me was like when that whole therapy scene, one of the best scenes in the whole show. It's like when all the different characters, when Thomas is like, like, are you angry, John? With a smile. Like, I'm like, Thomas is just. Oh God, I could go on and on. Like that's why I, I, that's why Thomas is just like the MVP of everything. Yeah. How how has this guy been retired from acting for 15 years? It's one of those types of roles that demands pitch perfect delivery and the way that an actor carries himself as mm-hmm. the character. And if he falters in even like the slightest degree playing a role like that, it doesn't work. No. But he just ne- I really do think that he is giving a perfect performance as Terry Silver. This is like Emmy worthy. I yeah. mean, him and Zapka are like. If the Emmys would consider Cobra Kai to a wider extent, yes. Oh my God, it's well deserved in my book. Can I ask you how long your interview is with Thomas? That one was short. So I did. I did like the the video, uh, the TV junket rotation with the cast. So that one will be. It was him and Yuji paired, and that's six minutes. Then I had I had 30 minutes with with John, Josh and Hayden. But then also we're going to do a ladies night with Mary. She's finally returning to the show. And that'll be a longer one. That'll be like probably like 35, 40 minutes. Nice, nice. How, how about so to, so to, Thomas is six like others? Six would you minutes. say? Him okay. and Yuji paired for six minutes. And it's this, it, it was him and Yuji paired for six minutes. It was Billy and uh, Ralph paired. It was also... Griffin, Dallas, and Una paired. And then this one was hard, I'll admit. I love yeah. them to death, but like this was not enough time to talk to five people. Oh, it was my. Peyton, Jacob, Gianni, Sholo, and Mary all paired in one room for for six minutes. Oh my so goodness. I say I asked um like I made the order for one question for each of them. And I purposely, I felt bad when this happened in the moment, but I saved Mary for last just in case I didn't mm. get to her because I knew I'd be talking to her in the future. But man, not did enough you, time. Even if they had given me double the amount of time, it still wouldn't have been enough time. Did you get to her or no? I didn't get to her. Uh, <laughs> we, we left in the video. It's kind of funny. You can hear me. You hear me try, like basically say, we'll see if I get kicked out, but Mary, and then someone chimes in and they're like, you're done. Oh man. I, I, yeah, I, I, so I, I saw like interviews, uh, th- I think some like non-spoiler interviews yeah, yeah. Have been posted from that same day. So I know exactly what you're talking about that. Props to, props to you for it's a puzzle man it's hard oh my god i i i wish i want to see like i mean i obviously i know it's like you know very tough to get but like i i think you're just such a great interviewer so i would i would just love to see you interview thomas or griffin or any of these people for like an hour or two like a two like give me three hours I would and do like it. just like like just a full like like thomas needs like there's like there's he doesn't have any like long. I want an. Inter- I want to know his whole life. I want to know like, and I want to know his like how he gets into it because like he is. Oh my god! You're putting ideas in my head. I don't know. I I like that. I like <laughs> that idea. I'm very interested in it. Maybe when I get back from uh, from TIFF. I'll see if I could put an ask out. Yeah, please, please, please for me. For me. Like, I've had the longer form conversations with Billy, most of all, and he's always absolutely wonderful. Yes. Yeah, those those were great. That was that was that was a great one. Billy, Ralph, Yuji. I want to I want to hear more from Yuji too. Like I want to hear more from everybody. He's great. Sean, Sean Kanan, Robin yeah. Lively. Robin, but, Li- Robin Lively. Well, you know, I think, um, you know, Christian, Christian's doing some interviews soon too. So you should keep an eye on his channel. I know he's got a couple coming up. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Oh, that's going to be fun. 
Well, I th I, th I think we <laughs> Oh my god. We, 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 <laughs> we can keep going. We'll 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 have to do a part 2 or a part yeah. We'll have, we'll do we'll do Well, I'll, t I'll tell you even after talking about it for all this time, I guarantee you when we hang up, something will come to my mind that I failed to mention and I'll be like, "Damn, and we have to do it again then." Definitely, definitely. We I keep mentioning Thomas, but I feel like we haven't talked about him enough. <laughs> There's never enough Thomas Terry Silver talk ever. No, or Mike Barnes. I can talk about Mike all the time. So, <laughs> so good. But Perry, thank you, thank you so much for for joining me for this stream. It's always so great talking to you, and um, I'm very excited to see your interviews with the Cobra Kai cast. And can you tell everyone, like, you know, Cobra Kai, like what what's coming out Cobra Kai related uh, on your end? Where can people watch it? And even outside of Cobra Kai with Collider. Yes. you have anything that you're working on that you're doing right now? Oh, so much. So all the Cobra Kai content comes out starting day of release on the Collider Interviews YouTube channel. We're basically just going to release them all weekend one of release. So they'll all be up and running very soon. The Ladies Night with Mary Mauser will be on the Collider Extras YouTube channel. And... I'll just, I'll be blabbing about Cobra Kai probably on my own YouTube channel as well. It's just my name. If you search my name in YouTube, it comes right up. Perfect. Anything else outside of Cobra Kai? Oh my God. Uh, I don't know. So on? Social media stuff. Uh, I've got my, my newbie segment. It plays before the trailers when you go to the movies and it, mm. it's basically a segment called Perry's Picks. And I get to talk about movies that I'm really excited about that are coming up. So there's that too. I feel like there's so much going on. <laughs> I yeah. can't keep it all straight. It's too much. It's too much. All these shows that, coming never out. Too, never too much. I lie. It probably is too sometimes. much sometimes, but I can't help myself. I don't want it any other way. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's good. Like keeping yourself busy. I don't, I don't know if you feel like this. Like, do, do you ever feel like if you're not busy, there's something wrong? <laughs> if I'm not busy, I will find a way to make myself busy. Like everyone yeah. always tells me like, why don't you just take like the afternoon off? If I had an afternoon with nothing to do, I would sit there and I would watch a movie or show. Then I would fall in love with that movie or show. And then I would turn it into work because I would need to do interviews for that movie or show. <laughs> it's a whole process. But Always. <laughs> I respect what you do. Everyone go check out, check out Perry Nemiroff and her stuff. Where can people find you on social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube? Twitter, Instagram, and I am also full blown obsessed with TikTok. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> I think I'm P Nemeroff on Twitter and Instagram, but it's my full name on TikTok. I probably should have kept it consistent, but I didn't. There we go. Check it out. And I am the Cobra Kai Kid. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Cobra Kai Kid. Cobra Kai never dies. <laughs>